This tutorial explains how to run a SQL query using the R programming language. This tutorial is a follow-up to another tutorial that was recently created on the Statistics Globe YouTube channel. So make sure to check out this other tutorial before you watch this tutorial in case you want to learn more on databasing in R in general. This tutorial was created in collaboration with Kirby White, who is a researcher at the Seattle Pacific University and an absolute expert when it comes to databasing in R. So without too much talk, I'll head it over to Kirby. Hey everybody, this is Kirby White here to do a tutorial on um, doing SQL queries, but within R and R Studio. I'm gonna show you three different ways of running the same query, so I hope you enjoy this. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm in R Studio and I have an R Markdown file open. This is the tutorial that I wrote um, for uh, this video, and I will go ahead and clear all the output and make sure the environment's empty so that you know we're starting from scratch. I'm gonna activate and load these three packages, ODBC and DBI. Those are specifically database interface packages. And then Tidyverse is not specifically for databases, but was actually built and architected in a way to mimic SQL queries. So you might find that if you're already familiar with the Tidyverse functionality, that you're able to use it to work with databases in a way you might not expect. I'll go ahead and turn those packages on. You can uncomment this code to install it if you do not already have those packages installed. And it will take just a second because they're big packages and I'm rendering video at the same time. So if you don't already have a database uh, to connect to, that is okay. This chunk of code here is designed to create a sample database that lives temporarily in the memory of our studio. And what it's doing here is um, opening up two pre-built tables that come with the Tidyverse package. It's establishing a, uh, an empty database in the memory and then adding those two tables to that database and then removing those tables from the environment so that the only place we can access that data is from the database. You can see that we have added con as an object to the global environment, and that is the connection profile to the database that we just built and that's living in memory. What you can do if you want to just get a preview of the files, you can use the uh, TBL or the, the table function, and you can say, hey, show me the table that's coming from the database connection profile and the table should be named who this is one of the tables that we just loaded and this will essentially show you a preview of it so you can see that we've got a table with uh, multiple columns in here the the country and this um, uh, this table is specifically tracking new tuberculosis cases in different countries around the world from 1980 to I think 2013 and so we can scroll through it and find that there were some years that were empty for Afghanistan and Albania. And that's okay. This is just uh, to give you a sense of the information that's in here. The first way of running a query in R Studio is to actually do it with SQL code. If you were to insert a new chunk in R Markdown, which I used Control-Alt-I, that's the hotkey there to insert a new, trunk, uh, new chunk, or you can um, uh, do it from here. You can actually see when you use the drop-down menu to add a new chunk, you've got multiple options for uh, different kernels to load. So that all of these chunks can run different programming languages. The default is R because obviously we're in R Studio, but if you change this to SQL, it will now start uh, processing SQL code in here um, and ignore uh, any R code. And so what I've done is gone ahead and, and changed the header in here to set up, uh, essentially give it some parameters for running the SQL code in here. We've ch told it where the database lives connection equals con that again is our connection profile to the sample database and then output.var is the r object that we want to store the results of a query in it's okay if you don't know sql at this point but this is a sql query and what it's doing is it's asking for three different columns from the who table 
and one column from the population table and then filtering those. So it's saying we only want to look at um, at new tuberculosis cases from Brazil or Germany and I just picked those at random and we only want to look at cases between 2000 and 2010. And so this is the query for asking for that and we're going to rerun this query three different ways in this tutorial. When I run the chunk and I use the hotkey control enter, you can see that we've created a new object in the environment called M1 results and it is a data frame that's 1.7, I'm not sure if that's megabytes or kilobytes, kilobytes, and it's got 22 observations of four variables. Just to prove to you that this is now a regular data frame, I'm going to go ahead and let's look at the Head of it, the top uh, six columns. And you can see that indeed we are looking at uh, the country of Brazil. The year starts at 2000 to 2005. Uh, these are cases and this is the population information. And so uh, we ran a SQL query to ask for specific data from our database and we stored it in an R data frame that now you can use the way that you normally work with data frames in R. You can create graphs out of it, do more complex statistics, uh, whatever you would like to do. It's a regular data frame. This second method for running the query is to, you're still writing it in SQL, but instead of creating a new chunk that's dedicated to SQL, you're running it with an R function. What I've done here is just demonstrate how you can uh, build the query in multiple text fields and then join them together using the paste function. And so I'll go ahead and run these five lines of code. And you'd see that we created multiple character uh, strings here and then join them together in this object called query. And if we take a look at what query is, I'll show you down here in the console, this is the full query put together because we just took these individual uh, text characters and pasted them together. Now what we can do is use the dbGetQuery function from the DBI package. And we can again say, hey, I want you to go look at the database that's stored in con. And the SQL statement I want you to execute is the text stored in this query statement. We're gonna store that in a data frame called m2results. And we can take a look at it here and it looks identical to m1results and that's intentional. I wanted to uh, retrieve the exact same data set in three different ways so that you can see how the methods differ. So this is method two. Um, and now let's jump to method three, which is really optimized for people who don't yet know SQL, but you are already familiar with the tidyverse and in particular the dplyr functionality, such as using these pipes to string multiple commands together. Again, I'll say what I did at the beginning that uh, the dplyr package was built with SQL queries in mind. And so there, the functionality that you use in dplyr is actually a replica of SQL commands. And so filter, select, left join, these are actually database terminology. And if you learned them for dplyr, you'll be able to find it um, relatively easy to, to use them for SQL queries without knowing any SQL. So I'll walk through this one at a time. Again, we're using the, the table argument to say, bring me a table of information from the database. And I'm going to start with the who table, and then we're going to filter it. I only want to look at the who table if the country is in Brazil or Germany, and if the years are between 2000 and 2010. Then we can use the select command to say, I only want a few columns from that data set. I only want to look at country, year, and uh, new cases, in males 0 to 14. Once we do that, we, we can use the left join argument to say, take the data set that we have and bring in a second, um, uh, bring in information from a second table, but make sure that the rows match. And so what we're doing here is we're saying, bring over the population column from, um, or I, I, I'm sorry, we're, we're bringing in the population table and we're matching the rows across table by country and year. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna add any new columns from the population table to the table that we've created so far. And then the collect argument uh, here or, or command here, this is what we need to do to ask dplyr to actually execute the query and not simply build it. So at this point, you should have essentially identical um, 
uh, uh, oh, let me actually run it and demonstrate. So now we've got, when it finishes, M1, M2, and M3 are data frames, regular data frames that we can work with in R like you would anything else, and they are identical. I just realized here, actually, that I have a typo. So um, let's see, I think it was 3544. Let's rerun this and make sure that it goes to... Well, I don't know. I have a typo uh, here. I'm calling it a different one. So this is why they're slightly different sizes. Uh, but anyway, th these three methods all demonstrate uh, the uh, different ways of working with SQL databases in R and R Studio. Let me talk briefly for mo a moment about when you might use each of these three methods. The first method is for people that already know SQL. Uh, you have to be familiar with SQL and, and writing those commands to use that first method. And you have to be using R Markdown so that you can say, these lines of code are in SQL and these lines of code are in R and they're not interchangeable. Those are the requirements for using the first method. The second one, you also have to know SQL, but you don't have to be using R Markdown because you're using the SQL code as text within R functions. And that's mostly useful if you want to programmatically interact with your database. So if you're looping through a data set and you want to run a different query based on the values in each row of that data frame, then you probably need to use R functions to execute that query because, because you can't create a new SQL chunk with dedicated text to it uh, every time you need to rerun a new query. The third method is really for people that aren't necessarily using R Markdown and don't yet know SQL. You can use the dplyr functionality you're already familiar with, with some slight modifications to, um, uh, to, to query your data set, your database, the same way that you would have done with the dplyr functionality any other time anyway. So hopefully that's an easier way for you to get introduced to SQL and working with databases if you don't yet know SQL. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for sticking with me this far. I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot once again to Kirby White for his contribution to this video. In case you want to learn more about the background of Kirby White and the other articles that he has published on Statistics Globe, you may check out his profile page on the Statistics Globe website. I will put a link to his profile page on the website into the description of the video. Furthermore, if you have liked the video, I would be very happy if you leave some positive feedback in the comments and make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel in case you want to get notifications in future when I'm releasing new videos to the channel. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.